Good morning all. Today I'm looking at a battery charger called the Litocala. Uh, this unit has come in from Gearbest.com and it's uh, this, it's the Litocala Engineer Lee 300. So in the box, uh, instruction manual, this is in English and Chinese. This is a power adapter. Um, I've got a Euro one, so I probably won't be using that. There's also a car cigarette lighter adapter uh, cable with a 2.1 millimeter plug and the battery charger is this. So this is a two cell charger for lithium ion and uh, nickel metal hydride cylindrical cells. It says on the back here for lithium ion and nickel metal hydride. It doesn't do lithium ion phosphate. Uh, you can see the, uh, oh, the input is 12 volts DC. That's where is it? That's there. There's also a five volt USB output. And this thing can operate uh, in a power bank mode where it draws power from the cells, only works in lithium ion and puts them out to the USB five volts. Uh, back to this spec, 4.2 volts for lithium ion, uh, 1.4 volts for nickel metal hydride. Uh, output current can be either 500 milliamps or one amp and uh, stuff about discharge and the USB. So let's put a cell in here and first check out this uh, USB power bank functionality. I've got an 18650 cell here. Now positive is to the front. So let's put a cell in there. Now nothing comes up on the display, but the USB output now activates. If I plug in this little torch head, you can see that this operates as a standalone power bank. The power bank functionality works with one or two lithium ion cells. It doesn't work with nickel metal hydrides, which makes sense because there really wouldn't be enough energy in a couple of little nickel metal hydrides uh, to run the five volts for very long. So it only works with lithium ion. And as you can see in this uh, power bank mode, nothing comes up on the display. It just turns the 3.7 volts on the cell uh, into five volts and puts it out on the USB socket. So let's plug in a 12 volt supply. Now I'm using 12 volts from my solar power system. Uh, currently it's 12.7, we don't really have any sunshine. And see what comes up on the display. Uh, so there was a display test and now we're getting null on both channels. Let's drop a cell in there and see what we get. And the first thing that comes up is MR. Now we've got the current flashing. I think I'm able to change the current if I want to and now it's started charging. The light stays on for a short time, but quickly goes off. You can press the button to bring the light back on. But that MR thing is internal resistance. So I'm gonna try that again. Let's just push that away, drop it back in. 114 MR, I think that's milliohms. Now, once the cell has started charging, we can cycle through the displays. The first one is milliamps. Now it doesn't tell you the actual current that the cell is drawing because at 4.2 volts, this cell would now start uh, taking less current. So it shows you the nominal current, the start current. Uh, it also shows you accumulated milliamp hours. We've had uh, three milliamp hours charged so far. Uh, total time and also this internal resistance. Now I've just uh, set this going again and it's measured it at 109 milliohms. I don't think that's going to change during the charge. It just records or plays back the uh, test that it did right at the beginning to show you the internal resistance of the cells. Now I think this is quite interesting that it gives you this internal resistance. So I'm going to try a few different cells and see what internal resistance we get. So the blue one, 109 milliohms. Uh, this cell marked ultrafire is actually showing 125 milliohms. Uh, this through night uh, protected cell is coming up with 125 milliohms. Uh, this is a protected cell I bought on eBay some time ago. Now that's also coming up as 125 milliohms. And uh, this ultrafire cell, which was very cheap on eBay, 125 milliohms again. So how accurate and reliable this uh, internal resistance test is, you just have to judge for yourself. Right, I've put a lithium ion in one of the slots and a nickel metal hydride in the other. And I'm just gonna go through the user interface. It's extremely simple. 
uh, refreshingly simple you might say there is just a mode button for each uh, slot now if you press the mode button when the light is off it just turns the light on um, if I cycle through the uh, information we've got milliamp hours we've got total elapsed time the internal resistance from that initial check that doesn't update it would seem and current now you can change the current when you first put the cell in but also if you hold the mode button for three seconds you can flip it from discharge to charge and you can set the discharge current either 500 milliamps or a thousand milliamps now if you press and hold the button again you can set it back to charge and that enables you to select the current you want either 500 milliamps or a thousand and for this cell I think I'll pick a thousand milliamps after a few seconds that stops flashing and the cell starts charging now this slot is set to uh, discharge and a thousand milliamps and you can see that the voltage isn't dropping and that's because the discharge mode doesn't immediately discharge it does a charge first and then it switches to discharge and in the discharge mode if you let it run to completion it will give you a capacity check the discharge it would appear from the manual always occurs at uh, the lower current setting a discharge at one amp this thing would get extremely hot so uh, that's done at 500 milliamps so the lithium ion cell uh, is still in discharge mode and uh, you can see now that the voltage has dropped it's also switched to milliamp hours itself so it appears to have flipped over to the discharge mode so it's now discharging at what current uh, 500 milliamps um, and it will do a capacity check at the end of that discharge cycle now I was looking for the termination uh, procedure for nickel metal hydride it's going to be delta V for lithium ion it's going to be uh, charge with uh, constant uh, current initially and then constant voltage it doesn't actually say this it says end way battery voltage will be monitored automatically so it's not very specific about how termination is done but it's pretty much uh, guaranteed that it'll be done with delta V and CCCV uh, the other thing I want to know is what's the range on the 12 volt input because my solar power system can go up to 14.4 it's not going to today because there's no sun uh, so I'll have to check that myself it just says 12 volts 1.5 amps uh, but I'll soon find out whether or not this will tolerate 14.4 volts and I'll report that back in the description so on the face of it this is a really neat charger with all the essential features and nothing unnecessary uh, two charge currents 500 milliamps and one amp that covers most uh, situations you'd need it's got the neat little USB power bank output function I'm not sure I'd use that very much uh, it's 12 volts input or mains using a suitable power adapter and it does say in the manual that you must absolutely use the power adapter supplied I'm not quite sure why because it's only a 12 volt 1.5 amps uh, but I will find out whether it will tolerate uh, much higher voltages and indeed much lower voltages if this thing uh, goes down below uh, I don't know 11 volts or something it uh, charges lithium ion and nickel metal hydride it has both a charge and a discharge mode and when you discharge it does a capacity check so it'll be a really quick way of doing well not quick but a nice easy way of doing capacity checks on lithium ion cells and just write the capacity on the cell itself uh, I've just listened to it and it doesn't make any alarming buzzing noises it all sounds quite quiet it's also not particularly hot it's actually running quite cool which is nice to see uh, it would be nice if the light stayed on a little bit longer when you press the switch it does seem to go off uh, very very quickly it uh, I presume is some sort of energy saving function although having said that I'm having to talk now to get it to go off but there it is it's gone off after about five seconds I think uh, having said that of course it's nice that it has a backlight uh, the uh, lacrosse or the technoline has no backlight it's very nice to actually have that facility uh, and you only have to press the button to turn it on very very simple to use uh, another thing I like is that uh, irrespective of which mode you're in current or milliamp hours or uh, time or the uh, internal resistance check voltage is always displayed that never goes away off the display and I think that's excellent I always want to be able to see the voltage of the cells during charging at the beginning of charging and at the end of charging I like that feature 
So with all these features and no unnecessary features, I think this could become my favorite battery charger. It's also a pretty reasonable price. Uh, on Gearbest at the moment, it's uh, 20 US dollars free shipping to the UK. So just a question mark over this uh, internal resistance test. On the lithium ion, I've got 15 milliohms. Uh, sorry, on the nickel metal hydride, 15 milliohms. On the lithium ion, 125 milliohms. That just seems a little bit suspicious. So there it is. There's a quick first look at the uh, Litokala Engineer Lee 300, a two slot battery charger, 12 volts in, uh, five volt USB out. Nice and simple, uh, uncluttered user interface. Very, very simple to use with the single mode button, uh, backlight, features you want, no features you don't want. I really like this battery charger. Cheerio.